Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a very interesting case, a head CT without contrast. I'll give you a chance to look it over. It's a very interesting set of findings. See if you get some idea of what's going on here. I'll tell you the history now. This is a patient who had a heart attack, myocardial infarction came into the hospital and was resuscitated. Cardiac compressions were done. This head CT was done. What's wrong? It's a 67 year old male. First of all, you'd certainly expect him to have more cortical sulci apparent and you really see just about none. No cortical sulci, none of the infoldings of the cortex which form the cortical sulci, the depths of those subarachnoid spaces that follow the cortex. Maybe you see a little bit of a hint of cortical margin here, this dotted line right here, here, but it's hard to tell because there's a lot of noise here. Look at the ventricles, how do they look for a 67 year old? They're very small. Teenagers don't have ventricles that small. Let's look down in the posterior fossa. The anatomy is very poorly visualized. Fourth ventricle itself appears very small. Can't really see any of the folia of the cerebellum. So what this is is a global infarction of the brain and the patient had a myocardial infarction and was deprived of blood flow to the brain for too long, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. And by the time they got him resuscitated and then to the CT scanner, there had been so much cellular death in the brain and associated edema that the cortical sulci were all effaced from that edema. That edema also produced mass effect compressing the ventricular system including the lateral ventricles <clears throat> and the fourth ventricle and I don't really see anything of a third ventricle in between the two. Gray-white matter differentiation is nearly completely lost. You can see some remnant I believe of cortical margin, but I think a lot of those little lines that we're seeing here and here are actually vessels. They're just remaining vessels that have high attenuation material in them, blood, which look white, brighter uh, in terms of their density compared with the adjacent brain which has been so deprived of oxygen and blood flow that it is ischemic and maybe globally infarcted. Okay, look how tight things look in the quadrigeminal cistern. This is the midbrain. This is the cerebellar vermis poking its head up through the tentorial incisura. You don't see any of the landmarks of the, the midbrain, the colliculi, for example and you can't really distinguish where the midbrain transitions to the pons. You don't have a prepontine cistern. You really hardly have any cisterns. So this is a very unusual case of advanced global infarction. You can see that the blood vessels here, middle cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, are hard to see, but you can see that there is some increase in the amount of high attenuation that is clearly attributable to the middle cerebral artery which still has blood in it of course and you have as a result of the diffuse cerebral edema you have effacement of the ventricular system and effacement of the cortical sulci so a very rare example of global infarction secondary to a myocardial infarction.